What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. This one is a really fun match that I had against my friend Echo Bows from my Twitch community Discord server. If you enjoy these types of videos, consider hitting that sub button. Only half of the people who watch my channel are subscribed. It only takes a second and it really helps out the channel. Anyway, today's match is actually an underused tier match, which is nice because I'm used to dealing with people kind of just bringing the standard OU teams. Literally everybody on the 2022-2021 code pretty much just brings the same team. Uh, so it's nice to switch it up a bit here. Establishing a lead, I'm going to go with nudes just because you know how I'd be sending out the nudes. I'm expecting them to lead off with Agron and probably get up rocks of their own. I'm thinking I'm just going to play it safe, start out with the nudes, uh, get some hazards up. I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking they don't really have any rapid spin, uh, potentially, you know, defog crobat or something like that. But... Uh, they do end up leading off with the Aggron there as expected, so I'm thinking they're probably just going to go for Stealth Rock as I don't have any hazard control because that's a problem of mine lately, but it seems important for me to get rocks up, so I just go for the rocks here as they actually end up going right for the Heavy Slam. So Nudes just comes into a nice Rude Awakening, wake the fuck up bitch, we are in a battle, and just send him right into it. Huge ass Body Slam from the Optimus Prime over here, but uh, that activates my Citrus Berry. Now looking at the damage, the first roll... Uh, puts it actually in range by like 2 HP to kill me next, and I'm thinking I don't really have anything that wants to come into a Heavy Slam from Aggron. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, waste Typhlosion HP since they don't have rocks up, potentially Eruption's going to be nice for me. So I decide that it's probably my best option just to leave Shuckle in here. Um, I'm going to try to go for a knockoff. If they end up getting a minimum roll, uh, I will be able to live this attack. Unfortunately, they do take me out there, so... You know, you hate to see it, Nudes kind of came in, set up some rocks, and then just got evaporated. So, it's kind of a bummer. But, good news is, this allows me a switch into whatever I want. Um, I'm kind of worried about this Aggron because it doesn't have its Sturdy Broken yet, so that's kind of an issue. I'm concerned about going into Typhlosion and then just taking an Earthquake after it knocks it to its Sturdy. So, instead, I bring out the Frostitude. Also, side note, anybody ever noticed the pointy things coming out of Jinx's side? I, I don't know, what, what's the deal with that? I don't know. But... I'm just going to go for a lovely kiss and basically pray to the Frostitude gods that it hits. They actually end up switching into um, the Metagross here. So I'm just out here dealing with some big old Steel types. Um, but I do actually land the old Smoocheroonie, kiss the Xbox 360 right in the face, and that is actually great. When Frostitude can land kisses, that's how you know it's going to be a good day. So I've got a little bit of momentum on my side at this point. I don't really want to stay in with Jinx. I can't do anything. Um, and I'm thinking, you know what, this might be a good opportunity to just serve up some meatloaf. I'm thinking Dun Dunsparts can come in, uh, if they actually end up staying in with the Metagross, I can get up some coils and maybe make some Dunsparce magic happen. That's kind of been my main goal with this team, is to, <laughs> is to get my little butt plug looking homie to, you know, do some stuff. So, uh, they do stay asleep turn one, I'm going to go right for a coil. I'm wasting no time out here, we are going to, we're going to try to get something going. Uh, she's actually going to end up switching out into the the camera up here. So camera up has a couple different options in terms of moveset. I'm thinking at plus one attack and defense, I can at least take an attack from this thing and maybe, you know, make some stuff happen. So I do get that coil up, which is great. Honestly, ideally in this situation, they didn't switch into the camera up, but now it's kind of too late. I've already got my coil up and I'm like, you know what, let's, let's just go for a glare. I don't have anything that wants to switch into this thing. It is likely going to be a uh, special attacker anyway. So they actually end up going for a rock polish and rock polish camera up is a pretty sick set, not gonna lie. He's the, the most shiny, he's extra shiny now. He's got polished rocks and he's the shiny coloration. So I go for the glare. Unfortunately, since they got the <laughs> the rock polish up, it's actually still gonna end up being faster than Dunsparce, which is kind of just upsetting. But uh, they break through the paralysis, unfortunate, and land a flamethrower here. Actually ends up getting a critical hit. And that's what we like to call the overdone meatloaf. So, you know, that's that's a bummer. Dunsparce was not able to do his, <laughs> do some stuff, but I was at least able to uh, get the para off on the camera up there, which kind of negates the the speed. So it's likely that I'm not going to get swept at least. But you know, meatloaf, I'm gonna I'll, I'll try you out later. Don't worry, meatloaf, you've not seen the last of him. So I can go into whatever I want here. Uh, the issue about going into slacking is that they can easily switch into something to kind of avoid an attack here. If I go for an earthquake, they can just switch into the Miss Magius. Um, and there's kind of some, some issues here. So, I bring in the slacking. I'm just going to go for a rock slide because it seems like my safest bet. I feel like the Earthquake uh, is kind of obvious or just the Giga Impact. So, I'm afraid about the freaking ghost with the hat coming in. I'm just going to go ahead and click the rock slide here. 
as they end up switching out the camera up into the sleeping Xbox. Imagine being fully asleep and then just being sent out into combat, and the next thing you know, there's just a ton of rocks on your head. So, that actually does, that does like the least amount of damage that I've ever seen Slacking freaking do. Um, and so that's kind of annoying, but with the Metagross still sleeping, I'm in a pretty good position here to just switch into Typhlosion. It's likely that they're probably not going to click Earthquake here, so even if they did wake up, uh, I could probably just take one attack. They actually end up staying asleep, and the effect of Jinx is out here just being very nice. It call, call Jinx NyQuil, put that shit to sleep. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and expect to switch into the... Um, the Slow King. I'm, I'm looking at the matchup here. It's kind of the obvious switch into Typhlosion here. So I'm actually going to switch directly back into the Slacking. Slacking is just such a hard hitter that it kind of forces switches and just is very, very much able to put pressure on pretty much anything. So I end up doing the double switch here. I do end up getting the prediction correct as in comes the Paulette. Shout out to the nickname. And now I'm sitting in a position where a Giga Impact would likely kill this thing, but I'm still worried about... Um, thing switching into slacking, but um, being choice banded and with, you know, truant, that's kind of the things you got to worry about. So I'm actually just going to end up going for an earthquake here, thinking last time they switched back into the Metagross, it worked out really well for them, so maybe uh, I can catch them slipping with that. Looking at my team, I'm even considering maybe switching again, but I really kind of just got to get some stuff going at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the earthquake here. Choice banded earthquake should still be a two hit KO uh, on Sloking, so. It does actually do enough for a knockout here, but still just barely, as they actually end up showing me the Disable, which is a clutch play on a Choice Banded Pokemon. There's not a whole lot I can do at that point with my Earthquake being disabled, um, so that is quite interesting. Um, I still kind of have to develop a plan for this Slowking. My plan was initially just to weaken it uh, enough to the point where I can take it out with, um, you know, something easily. So. Obviously, being disabled, I'm kind of forced to switch here, and it actually kind of puts me in a tough position. Venomoth being kind of the only Pokemon I can bring in here, knowing they likely have Psychic. Uh, they could predict that and just go for the Psychic here. Um, so that is, you know, some, some, some scary stuff. Ends up going for the Slack Off, and just negates all of the hard work that my poor little Slacking did, so what the hell. Uh, but this actually puts me in a pretty good position, getting Venomoth in without taking any damage, especially with Hazards and stuff. Um, I know that for sure I can go for a Quiver Dance here. If they end up showing me that they have the Stab Psychic, I can definitely live that after a uh, plus one special defense boost. And then I might be able to even get a little mini uh, Venomoth sweep going and kind of kind of break apart some of their team, make it easier to take care of uh, with my fast Pokemon that I have left. So, this could be a bad situation here depending on what they're going to go for. I just go for the Quiver Dance. I'm like, you know what, Venomoth, just 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 dance, bro. That's all, you, that's, that's all you're here for. You're looking back at me like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> uh, so I get that nice boost. They do actually end up having the Psychic Stab. Um, that does a whole lot of damage, but it still puts me in range to the point where I can get some, I can really get some stuff going, uh, even with the Life Orb. So, I'm going to go for the nice little Stab Bug Buzz here. That is going to be enough to take care of the Slow King. I figured this thing was likely just max special defense, um, but that does take care of it. Because Venomoth is an absolute beast. I mean, seriously, people be sleeping on Venomoth to the point where it's like, it, it can honestly hold its own in like OU matches after just one Quiver Dance. So, next in comes the Crobat. I know that even if this is a plus speed nature Crobat, I should be able to outspeed after one Quiver Dance. Uh, the issue is, will a, um, will a Sludge Bomb kill? Resisted, but after plus one, I'm actually looking... Like, I should be able to take this thing out since it took that Stealth Rock damage, which is very important. Shout out to Shuckle for getting those up for me. I am just going to go for the Sludge Bomb here and show the Crobat who the, the Poison-type Flappy Wing guy is, and that's me. So that takes care of the Crobat. And uh, Tits McGee is just making some stuff happen. Life Orb is doing its thing, um, but in comes the Warden. Now, the Stealth Rock is going to break Sturdy here, which is great, and I... Still don't really have a switch into this thing, and considering that Venomoth was able to already do some uh, do some hard work to the team, it's looking like I could potentially get the remaining Pokemon I have left to kind of sweep up the rest of the match for me. So, I'm just going to stay and go for a Bug Buzz here. That nearly almost kills the Aggron as well. Dude, I'm telling you, you just need one Quiver Dance on this fella, and it's just... It's insane. Uh, they actually end up going for the Stealth Rock here. A little, little late game Stealth Cox. Never hurt nobody. Um, that's kind of unfortunate for Typhlosion, but really, it's not too big of a deal. Um, it was actually a smart play because Typhlosion was going to probably come in, take care of Agron if this didn't anyway. Um, and so now they basically get the Stealth Rock up. So, 
Yeah, one more bug buzz does take care of the warden. See you later. Unfortunately, Venomoth's reign is going to come to an end here as the life orb kills you. The life orb giveth and the life orb taketh. And you know, sometimes that's just the way she goes. So, I'm down to three Pokemon. We got Jinx, Typhlosion, and the Slacking. It's looking like Slacking is likely going to be my win condition here. With an empty battlefield, I kind of have to predict what they're going to end up going into. Um, I'm actually going to expect to uh, see the Metagross. I go into Typhlosion here just because Scarf Typhlosion is always a great bring-in whenever there's you know an empty battlefield. They do actually end up going into the Metagross here, which is nice. I get absolutely destroyed by some Stealth Rock as usual. Uh, my spicy sausage boy is, is, is not happy. Yeah. But I think Eruption is actually a little bit more powerful than Flamethrower, even after taking Stealth Rock damage. So I'm going to go ahead and just go for the Eruption here. If they end up switching, that is fine. I get some easy damage on something that probably doesn't want to switch in. So they end up just staying in with the Metagross here, and that does take care of it. So at this point, she's down to two Pokemon. They have the uh, Miss Maggie and the Camerupt left. I know that Camerupt can come in. I can't quite kill it with one more Eruption. It will take two, but could potentially get uh, the full pair there. Take some Stealth Rock damage. And even if Typhlosion goes down here, that's fine. I kind of needed it to just take care of that Metagross anyway. Uh, so it's working pretty, pretty nicely here. I really wish Typhlosion had his flames out all the time, by the way. I don't know why they ever decided to not do that but anyway i just i just stay in i go for the eruption there's no reason to switch out here um that is going to do it a nice little chunk of damage there unfortunately they do break through the para and get off the earth power which does uh which does take care of me so krakatoa going down is totally fine it did what it needed to do and this allows me to uh get in a free switch here and make some things happen so i'm gonna go into jinx obviously i outspeed i can end up knocking this thing out with a psychic which then just leaves me against the uh, against the Miss Maggie, who does actually outspeed me, unfortunately, so um, Jinx will likely go down, and it's gonna it's gonna be a close match here. So I go for the Psychic, uh, that is going to take care of the camera up. Obviously, they can't switch, but at this point now they have a full health Miss Maggie in the back pocket, which is never a bad thing to have, to be honest. It's great. It's it's a solid Pokemon. So in comes Salem Witch, and it's all gonna basically come down to how the matchup goes <laughs> with the slacking. I could hard switch into slacking expecting a shadow ball, but there's really no need for that. I'm just going to kind of uh, go for the psychic, test this bad boy out, make sure it's timid. It does outspeed, and Frostitude just ends up with uh, some more balls on her face. That's just kind of how that's her thing. So <laughs> down goes Frostitude. Now we're down to one versus one. It is Miss Maggie versus slacking. Now the good news is slacking is full health and pretty damn bulky. You see the gut on this fella? Uh, this thing is taking no damage from anything, especially since I resist uh, the stab. They obviously can't go for the Shadow Ball here. Now, I have a few different options. This could go well, or this could go bad. I could go for a Sucker Punch. If they attack, I win the game. If they go for a Nasty Plot on my Truant turn, can then attack me and then just rinse and repeat. I really have been telling myself I should switch Sucker Punch with uh, Night Slash. But I go for the Sucker Punch here. They do actually end up attacking, and that is easily going to knock out the Ms. Maggie there. Uh, Choice Banded Sucker Punch, ain't no way you're living that shit. So Slacking comes out on top. That is going to be the end of the match, and that was actually a really close game. As always, I had a lot of fun with this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button on the video if you do enjoy this type of content, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.